Hiya, welcome to Chris Park in Shooting Sports. Um, today I've got a Savage B22 Precision. This is, a, this is a chassis rifle built on an MDT stock designed for the um, PRS in the US or PRL in the UK which has um, started out with center fires and transferred into becoming a, a hotbed of the rimfire world now. It's, um, it's a great development of sport actually because at less than 10 p a shot, who can't afford to shoot some rimfire competitions? And you can experiment with different shooting positions, you can push the distances. Uh, it's all subsonic ammunition, so you've no noise, no issues, and uh, what a great sport, what a great development. This Savage is designed specifically for that, so um, today we're going to have a shoot a few shots with it, and let's see how we go. We're going to ring a bit of steel. Wish me luck. We've got the steel set up at 75 meters, and we've got some uh, SK Standard Plus uh, round nose ammunition today. This is standard velocity. It will be doing just over subsonic speed. Box will probably say about 1,060, but I'd probably reckon it'll do 1,040 or so. It's quite blustery. We've probably got a good 15 to 20 mile an hour gusts going on. So I'm just going to load a few more rounds of the mag. The magazine it sort of favours the right-handed loader a little bit more than the left because of the way the, um, the central carousel rolls around. You can load it left-handed. It's just a little bit less automatically intuitive if you, if, you, if you think of it in that way because you've kind of got to draw the bullet towards you as you um, slot it back into the magazine. But we're on target now. I'm just going to grab a rear bag. It's got an excellent butt design on this because we've got space for the hand to go here in the grip, and we've also got a good, good flat surface to use a rear squash bag on. This is just a soft bean bag, just uh, plastic pellets in it, and it suits me perfectly. I'm shooting off the back of my truck today, off the tailgate, which is. Uh, one of my favourite ways of shooting, actually, because I can just drive up, set up, and get shooting. This rifle's got a Savage Jackie trigger, which has a central blade. I actually really like these triggers because I think it gives you an excellent crisp uh, trigger operation without any kind of safety issues. Um, some people criticise them a little bit, but I actually quite like them. I think it's only the same as having a two-stage trigger, which many people have become familiar with, with, with air rifles. So I have no issue at all. Another comment I'll make is that Savage haven't gone silly long on the bolt handle and it's also got you know minimal serrations which aren't needed. You've no need for rotation grip on a bolt. This won't jam, it operates slickly and you'll see that in the video now, pretty sure. So I'm going to go with some headshots on this uh, some muntjac size steel deer. 75 meters. And the rifle's printing. A lovely group. Probably about the size of a 50p coin. Not sure what that will be in dollars. But I'm more than pleased with that. Okay, now with it being a rotary magazine, I can't see how many rounds I've got left, and I know there were a few before I loaded it. Uh, I think it's probably got three left in it, maybe four. But we're going to go safe firing drills, and this time I'm going to go for next shot. Let's see if we've got one left in that. Yep, we've got one more left. I've got a camera set up simultaneously recording on target. Um, I'm very honest in what I consider my, my, aiming, um, my aiming solution and how precisely I can be aiming. And I'm shooting body shots, neck shots and things on deer, so it's not like shooting a centralising a circle. But uh, I'm more than happy with that. In fact, I think I'm going to have another five.
And my next step is I'm going to push this target out. The scope on top is a Bushnell Forge. It's got 5mm at 100m clicks, which is 0 0.05 milliradians. Um, that's a little bit smaller than I would like, and it's certainly precise enough, but it does limit the amount of travel. But it's certainly a, a target discipline scope. It's got a nice throw lever here, goes up to 24 power, down to uh, down to three. So that's an eight times erector tube. Parallax adjustable illuminated reticle, and say milliradian clicks or milliradian unit clicks, but they're 0 0.05. You can see the bolt manipulation is is, is nice and crisp. Pop up the magnification a little bit. This time I'm going to go for an ear shot. I'm going to go for the, well, the deer's right here, the left one as I'm looking at it. I'm just going to err uh, left on my point of aim slightly. And I just nibbled that one on the edge. Nicely on point of aim. I'm going to go for the other ear now. I think I've got two more shots. See, I'm just taking up first pressure because I'm, I'm treating it like a two-stage trigger. I say first pressure, but I'm talking about the central central blade on the trigger here. And and you know, okay, I'm pointing in a safe direction, but I'm rattling that quite happily with my left off-shot finger. Safety catch is on the tang here, should I have wanted it to be, but I think that displays my confidence in the trigger. But let's not forget, I was pointing in a safe direction. Okay, I'm going for the deer's left ear now, which is my right side. Yeah, and I think this will be the last shot. Magazine out. Magazine release is just a, it's a large catch. Actually, it's part of the magazine itself on the front there. It's a nice thing. You get two magazines with a rifle, each one holds 10 rounds. So, let's move on a little bit and talk a bit more about the rifle. It includes Picatinny rail, which is uh, ideal for target disciplines. I would personally probably put an inclined a set of inclined rings or an inclined mount on it to give me more distance if I was hoping to push the distance with uh, with rim fire. It's adjustable cheek piece height, and we've got spacers here for adjustable length of pull. The fore end is fully floated, and we've got plentiful hand space with M lock rail underneath. This is actually the new Magpul bipod. Um, there's a slight downside with this in the fact that it won't fit quite as far forward on the m -lock rail as I would like because there's a there's a small aluminium part on top of the bipod. Were it mine, I'd just file that little nubbin off so I could slide it all the way to the front because I'm a great believer in getting the, the maximum amount of, of wheelbase I can on a rifle. This one's threaded because it's got a sound moderator on it. You can hear how quiet it is. And it's just a really, really nice rifle to shoot. Um, I think we've realised by now I review a lot more rifles on paper than I necessarily do on videos and I only do the ones on video that I know are going to perform and it's just going to be nice to shoot because video work doesn't pay and if I like shooting the gun I'm going to shoot it more. A little bit more about this uh, bipod from Magpul. We've got uh, legs fold forward, there's a release button on each side which locks them forward and they plonk down nice and solid and you can load the bipod if that's a way of shooting. I found it very comfortable. Uh, I'm a bit of a Harris fan. I, I don't like a lot of the newer bipod styles because I think they're a bit too flexible and a bit too wobbly with very high pivot points. This one's actually got a rotational axis probably about just over an inch, 25 millimeters from the from the bore line of the barrel which gives me a very solid position and there's a nice large locking knob on the underside here which copes with both cant and rotation left and right shooting position. Last but not least, each of the legs will extend. I've got to say, this was a surprise gift that was sent with the rifle for me and I'm rather enjoying using it. So much so, I'm going to shoot another group. The 
must admit, 22 Rim Fire is one of my favourite cartridges to shoot because it's quiet, modest, it's fun to shoot, you're not causing anybody any uh, noise issues, and you can you know, easily get rid of 50, 75, 100 rounds you know, in close proximity to people working. I mean, there's a there's a road not so far behind me, which is, you know, not nobody's getting bothered by that, but I'm, uh, don't worry, I'm plentiful distance from the centre line of the road. It's a Sirocco moderator on this one, and the rifle is screw cut to 5.8 UNEF, I believe, which is a 24 TPI pitch. It might be 28, can't remember that one off the top of my head. Let's go for a middle of the next shot this time. You notice I rushed those a little bit, went through a faster firing procedure, and I went for thumb up hold here, purely for speed on the trigger. I did actually flick one of the shots slightly left, but that's the fun of rim fire. I think you can see by my enthusiasm, I've already gone for loading the magazine again while I'm talking to you. We should have sprayed some uh, some circles on this target now. I didn't. But there we go. Well, I'll be. I'll put another shot into it, and then I'll just aim at the bullet splash for my remaining rounds. Very nice rifle to shoot. Having a bolt handle that's not too long is a great feature. Too many tactical bolt handles become so long they actually torque the bolt and jam it in position on it. At best, it stutters in. This one, you can hit that as hard and fast as you want, and it will not jam. Uh, it'll scratch up your hand a little bit because it has got some grooves cut around the circumference which wouldn't be to my taste. I'd rather just have a spherical ball on it, nothing at all other than that. But the length is perfect. It's a fast handling, nice rifle. With the safety catch fully on, it's down there, and we've now got no ability to fire. The bolt handle isn't locked though. And of course, when we disengage the safety, down we go, click. MDT stock uses AR-15 type grip arrangement. This is actually a really nice rubber one, and it's got a, a good palm swell, and it's got a nice uh, rearward cant on it, so that you've got reasonable reach to the trigger, actually, and of course, with the, um, the Savage Aki trigger being what it is, it's not one of those gruesome heavy triggers you've got to uh, really concentrate on. You can just rest your finger onto it, take up first pressure, and then just gently squeeze, and it will fire. Um, the reach to trigger for an AR-15 feels comfortable because of that, because AR-15s can often be quite short with the trigger very close in and it tends to wrap round into your, into your knuckle rather than being on the pad of your finger. But yeah, I'm generally I'm pretty happy with this rifle. Cheek piece adjustment, there's two screws at the back here. Up and down we go. You'd probably just put a, put a zip tie or something around them because if you need to take it off in a hurry, you will to remove the bolt, but then of course with the zip tie around it, or just an o-ring or something, pop that bin, drop it back into position, and those are nice and aggressive, the shape on those. So th there's no requirement to really to squeeze them to, to get them actually gripped to tighten them up. They'll just nip, and that's, you know, I think that's probably more aggressive than is required. So if I nip there, yeah, that's not moving at all. Recoil pad, there's not going to be much recoil on it. It's a nice soft rubber, um, not too soft, and you can see here you've got um, quick release spacers, so you don't need to take the screws all the way out to, to slot those off. You can, of course, go down short with the rifle, you know, down to 13 or so inches, and you can keep adding spacers till it's as long as you want it to be. You might need to put longer bolts in, whatever, but that's fine. And of course, the chassis is a one-piece aluminium machining, so it's absolutely stiff. 
there's nothing rattly you know you've, you've got no um, can't think of the name for it now uh, you've got no buffer tube assembly and uh, the buffer tubes can often be a bit of a pain because if they come loose they rattle and you can rotate left and right and what a pain that is so yeah this is the uh, the Savage B22 Precision I think this is the kind of rifle I will be shooting more of so hopefully we'll see more video work on it and uh, let's see how we go thanks for watching keep in touch not a centrifuge and barrel heating isn't going to be a huge issue but of course there's huge amounts of uh, ventilation space here on the fore end. This is the Sirocco moderator at the front now and as you heard on the video this is giving me nice sound reduction. Magpul's bipods are polymer construction with just the metal where you need it to be but the metal used isn't some sort of monkey metal it's decent quality steel and aluminium. I'm actually very impressed with the performance on this and I've used polymer bipods before that have been far less reliable. I think any rifle of intermediate weight with an M-Lock forend, this might be my go-to choice because they're only about 130, 140 pounds which I don't think is too expensive. It looks like Savage have used a barrel nut assembly here to headspace. I've certainly had no problems with any tight rimmed rounds fitting difficult into the chamber or any kind of problems firing. I think on a rifle like this, you've just got to have a Picatinny rail. I'm so glad there's one on here. It makes scope mounting very simple and you can add any kind of mount you want, whether it's daylight, night vision, thermal, whatever, because although it's a, a sort of tactical rifle, this one, there's nothing to stop you actually using it as your regular day-to-day -day bunny rifle. It's, uh, it's not too heavy and I actually rather like carrying it around because it's far more better balanced than many other rifles that claim to be sporting rifles. I think if you want to push the distance, 34mm tube is where it's at. This Bushnell Forge is hitting the nail right on the head. I'm not a huge fan of 5mm clicks personally. I think they can compromise the, uh, the amount of adjustment range available from the mechanics inside. But this one is adjusting well, gives me a nice precise point of aim. And of course, with the precision rounds like the Tutti Rimfire, which you really do need bullet on bullet on bullet, that means you can get it spot on. Well, I didn't get quite as many filming opportunities with this uh, Savage B22 as I wanted to. We've, uh, we've kind of had a bit of a hiccup in the UK and we're um, currently self-isolating or certainly keeping quiet. Um, I have nothing against that. I think it's the right thing to do. Um, so I've put together the footage. I did get the rifle the other day and I hope you enjoy watching it. Just want to put a big thanks out to, um, to Edgar Brothers for supplying the Savage rifle and the Bushnell Forge scope both of which have performed very nicely on test, and to be honest, um, I'd quite like to have carried on doing more shooting with them. Uh, I'm keeping hold of them for a little bit longer yet, but uh, certainly until we're um, uh, allowed to sort of go out and about and everything other than just regular exercise, I don't think I'll be doing much shooting. But the rifle's here, the testing's done. Muzzle velocity, by the way, was um, 1,036 feet per second on average. Uh, and that, uh, that allowed me to shoot out to the decent distance, nothing near supersonic, nicely subsonic, everything's stable, uh, no transonic flight, things like that. Um, so there we go, I've put together the footage I've got, I hope you enjoy it, please like and subscribe, and uh, there's more videos on my channel. Uh, I'll try and get the opportunity to um, do some of the small reviews, but I'm not going to kid you and you know, read a specification chart on a rifle. If I can't get out and shoot it, I'm not really going to talk about it. But I have a few other accessories and some of the long-term items I've had for quite a while that I'm going to try and get some video work done on. Thanks for watching.